Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight, we're going to be reading in the Psalm 84, 11, He will give grace and glory. The whole verse says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. <clears throat> the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Let's go up here. We're just going to go ahead and start at the beginning of the chapter because we can't read past that spot there. My soul longs for the courts of the Lord. Verse 1, to the chief musician on an instrument of Gath, a psalm of the sons of Korah. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself. Remember, we read that in the Old Testament the other day or in a different spot in the Old Testament, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Interesting, we know what a pilgrimage is. Eagerly waiting the rapture, maybe. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. O God, behold your shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amazing Psalms. Bounteous is Jehovah in his nature. To give is his delight. His gifts are beyond measure, precious, and are as freely given as the light of the sun. He gives grace to his elect because he wills it to his redeemed because of his covenant, to the call because of his promise, to believers because they seek it, to sinners because they need it. He gives grace abundantly, seasonably, constantly, readily, sovereignly, doubly enhancing the value of the boon by the manner of its bestowal. Grace in all its forms he freely renders to his people, comforting, preserving, sanctifying, directing, instructing, assisting grace, he generously pours into, the, into their souls without ceasing, and he always will do so whatever may occur. Sickness may befall, but the Lord will give grace. Poverty may happen to us, but grace will surely be afforded. Death must come, but grace will light a candle at the darkest hour. Reader, how blessed it is, as years roll round and the leaves begin again to fall, to enjoy such an unfading promise as this, the Lord will give grace. The little conjunction and in this verse is a diamond rivet binding the present with the future. Grace and glory always go together. God has married them and none can divorce them. The Lord will never deny a soul glory to whom he has freely given to live upon his grace. Indeed, glory is nothing more than grace in its Sabbath dress. Grace in full bloom. Grace like autumn fruit, mellow and perfected. How soon we may have glory, none can tell. It may be before this month of October has run out. Interesting he says that. <laughs> we shall see the holy city. But be the interval longer or shorter, we shall be glorified ere long. Glory, the glory of heaven, the glory of eternity, the glory of Jesus, the glory of the Father, the Lord will surely give to his chosen. O oh, rare promise of a faithful God. Two golden links of one celestial chain who owneth grace shall surely glory gain. We have that grace because the Lord has bestowed it upon us as a most precious gift, right along with salvation. In fact, the grace came before the salvation because it was grace that he shown us when he called us before the foundation of the earth. We were given this promise. We were given this gift long before we ever existed, long before our parents, great-grandparents, long before a hundred generations were ever walking this earth. That shows intent. That shows a determined position. He will do this. He will keep his promises. And he has. 
to the greatest degree and will continue to do so. We can count on that. The wonderful blessing, the, the positive out of all this is that we know it's true. We know this is going to come to pass. We know that this is going to happen because he said it would. And we have a full record showing that he always does what he says he's going to do. This is where I stumble at because I struggle to figure out how people can think that the word of God has been corrupted. How it's been changed, how it's been messed with. How people can dictate to God how things are going to go, like the charismatics do. How people can change the word and change the doctrines, like the Catholics and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons do. How they can write their own book and use that in place of the Bible, like the Catholics, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Jews do, by the way. They did it too. It's a terrible thing. To be so stuck on ourselves and what our desires are that we would seek to change his word? Do we not believe he is an omnipotent God? Do we not believe that he is offended by such things? If we do, then why do we do these things? Well, the powers that be, the generations have done it. It's weird. It's terrible. It's strange. I, I can't imagine wanting to change his word to match something else or to mean something else. Read it for what it says and take it at its face value interpretation. A lot of people frown on that now. A lot of people look down on that. They think that they are higher educated and that anyone who's higher educated should have a higher understanding concerning this word. Well, I disagree completely. Jesus said, "You, unless you become like one of these little children, you cannot enter heaven. The faith of a child, we need to believe like a child. That's okay to know other details, to understand things in a deeper fashion, but it all comes back to that same simple belief, that simple faith, knowing who Jesus is and believing it, believing on his name, and counting on and trusting in him for everything. Our Father is going to keep these promises regardless of what we think, what we do, what we say, how good or bad we do, what our performance is, what our position is, it doesn't matter. His word will prevail, period. It has to this point, and it still continues to do so. No matter what they try to do to circumvent it, they can't. <coughs> I love it. <coughs> I think it's the power of God on display, in full view of the world, and they don't see it. How is it we haven't gone to war yet when we've had so many attacks? There, as there's daily attacks all around the world, and yet we haven't gone to war. Why? The Lord holds it back. They can't continue forward. There's all kinds of plans in place, actions that they want to do. Agenda 2030, the WHO, CDC, all these people, and it doesn't work. The, the Democrats, look what they're doing in our country. It doesn't work. They try, but they, it doesn't come to fruition. They can only, they're only allowed to go so far, and even they don't understand why they can't go any further. That's because the Lord doesn't let them go any further. Because the Lord doesn't let these things happen before their appointed time. And so they're restrained. They're held back. But there is a day coming when the restrainer will be removed, and these things will be allowed to operate full force. That will be a terrible day indeed. But it'll be a wonderful day for some of us. Because we will stand in heaven with our Lord. It's not going to be sunshine and rainbows. It's not going to be roses and chocolates. It's not going to be a fun time, this last little stretch we have left. But we know we're in the season. We can see the signs. We are a generation that will see the coming of the Lord because of everything that's been happening, because of everything that's going on. And what an amazing grace that is, that he gave us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to know, and a heart to understand. To understand truth, to be saved today, now. You know, not everybody is part of the bride of Christ. Not everybody is part of that group. All those that came before us, before uh, Jesus, they're not part of that group. All those that will come after, they will not be a part of that group. The church is a, a finite group of people. That's very interesting. I find that very interesting because you can't find where the church continues after a certain point unless they're coming back in glory. But they are separated from every other group. 
we are that group. What an amazing privilege. What an amazing honor. What an amazing gift of grace that the Lord has shown us to make us a part of that group, a part of the church. Amazing. I wish I understood more. I wish I had a greater grasp of this. I wish I could I could hold on to this a little bit more. The only thing that I can hold on to that I know for sure is that Jesus is Messiah and that he died for me, was buried and rose again, that I may be justified, sanctified, and glorified, that I may be saved. He gave that to me. He did that for each of you too. We have that grace. We have that gift. We have that mercy shown to us by our Father through him. Amazing. Not everybody can make such a boast. But we have that. And it is marvelous to witness him working in his people, in his church today. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.